Hi, this is Beverly Fells Jones, the Silver Fox of Consciousness, and I'm in the kitchen again. And today I'm doing one of those things that I normally wind up doing, and that's looking in the refrigerator, seeing what I have, and trying to figure out what I'm going to fix myself for dinner. So what I'm going to invite you to do is to join me. If you're new to my channel, my channel is Eclectic Alchemy, which says to me, and hopefully to you, that this channel does a whole lot of different things. And so therefore, when I do cooking, it's in the cooking playlist. If you like this video, please give me the thumbs up. If you're new, please subscribe. I'm always doing something different. A lot of times it's cooking or it's gardening, it's doing a podcast, it's bringing you along with me as I go through certification for a pastry chef. Now, I have no idea if I am going to continue that. And the reason being, I'm always looking for something new and exciting to do. So come along with me as I get stuff out of my refrigerator and create something that is so very appetizing that I think you'll try it in your life too. So let's get started. Okay, video stop. There's something going on with my camera and the card. But what I was telling you, this is Syrian pumpkin seed oil. Made in Syria, Austria, this oil has protected geographical status. Drizzle this nutty rich oil over squash, soup, potato stew, popcorn, wow, and ice cream. Also makes a wonderful vinaigrette, yes, and I've mixed it with um, apple balsamic vinegar and it does makes a really good dressing. But I decided I'm going to use it in this. It's a little bit on the sweet side, but I'm going to use that. I'm also going to put some carrot, I mean some celery in the mix, and I have some onion left. So that's what I'm going to do that. The seasoning, I've got some garlic powder. I may use some um, fresh garlic. I've got some chopped garlic here, so I have to decide what I'm going to do. We've got some parsley flakes, and I have some bruschetta. It, you said, but I'm supposed to use it for other stuff. Yeah, well, it's Italian dried herb mixed with olives. Got to think about how I'm going to use that. Okay. I've got some other oils here. I've got smoky barbecue extra virgin olive oil. I'm not going to do that. And here's some balsamic vinegar. They're going to be off on the side just in case. And by the way, I got this pumpkin seed oil at, at Vom Foss. Or you could probably find it at an oil, any oil and vinegar store. You might be able to find that particular one. And let's see. And this is my chicken thighs marinating in buttermilk. Okay. And also, I've got this onion. I'm going to bake it in the oven at 375 degrees, just like it is. I might take the outer parts off, but just bake it like it is. I was watching the Townsends on YouTube. They're a station that deals with 1800s, 1700s um, cooking, um, you know, and they talked about a baked onion, and it just fascinated me. And you just bake it like it is, and then you put salt on it. So I'll have my vegetables with my baked onion. Uh, this is some rosemary I may put into the mix. All right. And in the refrigerator, I found some noodles with some mushroom gravy that I made the other day. So I always use up my leftovers. So my meal today is going to be the chicken, the onion, the beet tops with Swiss chard and onions, celery, and garlic, and whatever um, there. 
And that's going to be my meal for today. So let's just get the chicken and the onion in the oven. And that's going to be at 375 degrees. I would use my power air fryer oven but for the chicken. But since the oven is going to be on, I don't need to double use electricity. Even though I know this will make the chicken really crisp. But I know then I can do it really crisp in the oven also. Alright, I'm going to put these in the oven and I'll be back. Okay, so with the onion, I cut off the bottom that had some of the root still on it. I cut off the top and I just washed the outside of it. Just cut off the bottom, cut off the top, and I washed the outside of it. And I'm just putting it on this pie plate with a little bit of foil and it's going to go in the oven. No salt, no pepper, no anything. The chicken thighs, I have this wonderful cast iron um, skillet that has a lid and the lid is set that you can use the lid to cook in so I decided just to put the chicken thighs in there. Now some of you know that when you marinate in buttermilk a lot of people put flour on it and deep fry it. Well it's okay it works but the last time I did this and I just put it in the um, Power XL power air fry oven they cooked up beautifully and I love the taste without having to add the additional flour so these are going in the oven the oven's heating up right now to 375 degrees and I'm going to leave them in there approximately 45 minutes the chicken should be done I will test the onion and see how far along it is I just decided to use the full onion no cutting it in half, no anything. That's the recipe that the Townsends. Well, I have been recording, and for some reason, the memory card I've been using was not allowing the record. So you missed a few things. Um, one um, of me chopping up the beets and cleaning them off. So basically, I just cut the beets off the um, off the beet tops off the bottoms. Bottoms went back in the refrigerator at the moment. Let me go this way. And you'll see the beet tops are just draining from my washing them. Okay, now I'm back over here. Now, some of you already know I got a gallic kitchen. So it's like one long tube, <laughs> right? So let's see. Here we go. Um, and so now I've chopped up the Swiss chard. And what I was saying in the previous recording was that the Swiss chard came from my garden. It is, right now it is February, and I harvested it, some kale, some collards, some Chinese cabbage. Um, and when I did all that, I wash it when I bring it in. Um, and I don't use any pesticides, and especially this time of year, I don't need to use pesticides. What I use is like some soapy water if I see some things and I'll do that. But my neighbors love me because I am always <laughs> bringing them some extra because next to you know my freezer gets full. I've dried up a lot of things and um, that. But what I was also saying is okay so I've got one piece of celery chopped it up this is the onion that I had in the refrigerator from another cooking thing that I did. So I got that all chopped up. Um, and so I'm going to put the oil, which is the pumpkin seed oil and the Zio's Italian Kitchen Extra Virgin Olive Oil Blend of olive oil and some cannoli oil. As they said, just a touch of cannoli oil. Also, and they're up in Oklahoma City. Um, also, when I was there last, um, they did have their seasoning blend available too. So that was really good. But, so, I'm going to get that started. I think I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use garlic powder. 
and right in this container is Himalay Himalayan sea salt. That's what I'm going to put there. So we've got the flavor of the pumpkin seed oil, the olive oil, garlic, salt. I'm not going to use the bruschetta. I don't need to put any parsley flakes or anything. I don't think it needs anything else. If it does, I'll taste it and I'll see. If the most, I'm not going to put that much salt in it. So let's get the pot all set up. Turn you around so you can see the stove. Right. And I'm going to turn the light on on top of the stove. That might give us a little bit more light. And turn that this on to medium and in goes the rest of this blend. I'm going to save this bottle. I can always make up a blend of my kombucha vinegar. That's when I let kombucha go, you know, too long and it becomes vinegar. And, oops. And I can put that in there. Let's see. All right. And, and see, the, the pumpkin seed oil is dark. I think you can see that. Yes? Yeah, you can see how dark it is. It's like, so it's got that and the flavor. Tastes like oil. <laughs> but it's a nutty, kind of a nutty flavor. That's why I won't need to use anything else in here. All right. So what I'm going to do excuse me for reaching over I'm going to take I love this thing uh, the celery and the onion pan's not hot yet but I'm going to take the celery and onion and put it in here now normally you probably would wait till the pan got hot but for me today we're just going to do this And I'm going to saute the onion and the celery together. Okay, I still didn't get that bottom. Get that little bottom of the onion, you know, where it gets to the... Okay, reach over you. <laughs> and get a spoon. And so it's starting to heat up. So I'll come back after this has sauteed down a little bit. So it's sauteing nicely. I picked up two recipes online. One was, and they're both for the beet tops, sauteed, it called for one to three bunches of beet greens, well I had three, one to two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, two cloves of garlic, I'm going to put some garlic powder in it says one lemon cut into wedges or two tablespoons of vinegar. So I'm debating I have lemon, I have lime or balsamic vinegar. That can give it a, a, ooh, a wonderful taste. One shallot or onion, got that one. It's optional. Red pepper flakes, I don't do that because I don't do hot. And it says one orange. So it's giving it all these awesome, just wonderful flavors. So well, I'm going to think about whether I'm going to use the lemon lime or I'm going to use uh, some balsamic vinegar. Okay, well I've decided that I wasn't going to let these onions get too done before I put in the greens. So, in goes my Swiss chard. I reach across the screen again. <laughs> or under the screen. And then I have my beets. And I'm going to take these like this and coat them well with the oil. And honestly, these all cook down. You know how greens cook down. And these will cook down much faster than collards or kale. I've turned the 
fire down to low. Almost got them all in. And I'm going to let these steam. So I'm going to get the lid and put it on. I decided, after tasting a little bit of the last of this balsamic vinegar I have, and I'm going to use the balsamic vinegar because it's a little bit sweet, it's a little bit full of acid, you know, the acidicness of it, and <laughs> this is like almost totally gone. And it calls for two tablespoons. So it was two tablespoons of the vinegar. Uh-oh. I don't have enough of this one. So I got plenty of balsamic vinegar. So I'm going to go. I'll stir this up first. Well, it may be enough. If not, I can add some more later. I'm going to go dig under here and get a lid, put this on low, low, and I'm going to let this cook. It smells so good, really, really good. Now the beet, the water was turning pink, so I'm sure that other things are going to be pinkish too. Yeah, where's my lid? Aha. in the dish tray. Alright, so I'm going to put the lid on and um, let it simmer for about 5 to 10 minutes and then I'll be back. Okay. Still need to do a couple other things here. It's been simmering there for a little bit. So I need to add the garlic powder and I'm just going to do a sprinkle just a, a little bit of much bigger and then some Himalayan sea salt already pre-ground all right that's probably about a half a teaspoon or less I kind of like it a little salty but you salt till set your taste what you like mm, I can smell the vinegar on this And as you see, it cooked down, and I'm going to let it simmer some more. The nutrition for beets is really good. Beets are really good for blood pressure um, and a lot of other things. I'll, I'll go research it and put it on the screen what uh, beets are good for. But beets and and Swiss chard, your greens, they're just really good for you. And they have a lot of fiber. Uh, this is good. This particular recipe, even with the balsamic vinegar in it, um, and it, balsamic vinegar does have some carbs in it, but this is also good if you're looking for a low carb diet, if you are diabetic, this is also good, a good meal for you. And for me, I will more than likely wind up eating all of these, all right, all, <laughs> this whole plan. Remember, I'm usually cooking for just me, so... If, if it's you and one other person, this could be perfectly enough. You'd need six beet tops if you were just going to do beets. But for me, this is perfect. I will probably eat it all. And then I'll eat, you know, maybe one of the chicken thighs. And we'll see how the onion, that big onion goes. And we'll figure out just how much I wind up eating. For those of you who don't know, I eat one meal a day just one meal a day 
and I haven't been exercising lately, so I need to start walking. I've been talking to my daughter about going walking and stuff because I still have somewhat of a belly. My weight is at the high end of my height, so I'm still not considered, you know, overweight. But for me, um, if I had, if I were long waisted, I probably wouldn't have the weight in my belly. It would be in my hips. Um, it all depends on your body type. And I'm an apple short waisted apple type, so I tend to get weight in my middle. So anyway. This is a good meal if you are on a ketogenic diet, a Mediterranean diet, I think paleo diet, but anything low carb, high fat, because you know I put the olive oil and the pumpkin oil in here. So low carb, high fat, this is a good meal for you. All right, let's take a look at this. Chicken is looking really good. So you're from the position where I would be eating. <laughs> but the chicken is good. It cooked about 50 minutes. I turned it over for a while. But it is crispy on the top. Chicken has a lot of fat in it, so you never have to put fat on your chicken. Alright. And... It looks wonderful inside. It's moist. It's what I loved about that buttermilk I had did before. I'm going to take a piece of the skin. Yes. Mm. I just need to add a little salt to that. This is the beets and the Swiss chard. Beet leaves. Mm. and that is really good and this is my leftover noodles with um, mushroom gravy I'll have to uh, do a video on that when I make it the next time at least the mushroom gravy and they're good onions not done yet and I think it's because I chose such a large onion. But I'll give you a picture of it when it's done. I already checked, checked it. And I cut it in half. So that it will... Because the, the middle wasn't done. The outside was getting done. But the middle wasn't getting done. So next time I make the onion, I'm going to use a smaller one. Versus that big one. That big one is more for making a blooming onion kind of thing. So anyway, give you a picture of that. I'll update you at the end of this about how that onion tastes once it's done. But I'm going to go eat my dinner now. Chicken is wonderful, moist, tender. Add a little salt on the inside. This is awesome. This is awesome. You know, and even if it was just the beet leaves or just the Swiss chard, that balsamic vinegar added just the right taste to it. All right. So that so it took about an hour or more. It's still hot. So the outer ones are pretty well cooked. I decided to put some butter on it. Give it a little bit more flavor. See if this is, yeah, this outer one is pretty much, there it is. Okay. So there's sort of the outer leaves. Okay. And then that one. So that's pretty pretty, isn't it? It's gorgeous. And it's not super soft. It's still a little hard. So I have to say that the onion, baked onion, is going to be a crunch. But got a little bit of Himalayan sea salt here. Okay. 
And no, this isn't one of those, you know, super pretty pictures. I just want to get to the onion so that I can taste it. Because I'm one of these people, I love onion. Um, I've got an onion pie that I absolutely love too. Mmm. It's good. It's sweet. I bet you when I should try this when Vigalia onions come out. So yeah, this is a really good accompaniment. But I would use a smaller onion and might put a little bit of water in the bottom of the pan. But otherwise, I don't know if you can hear the crunch. But it's good. And it doesn't have any of that, you know, want to make you cry kind of stuff. It's really good. So, smaller onion, bigger onion, let it cook a while, then split it in half, and then let it cook a while there. I would put the butter on when I did the split, and a little bit of sprinkle a little salt over it, and then finish baking it. This is Beverly Fells Jones, the Silver Fox of Consciousness. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Or sub and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.